Is everybody clean and happy right now? Can we go? Nate? Yeah. Do me a favor. Can, can I go with one of these for the first question? Uh, first three okay, questions. Cookie, let's get the names, okay? Yeah, I got it. Hey, I need to do a sound check. All right, how you doing? Welcome to the show, blah, blah, blah. Hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people do we have playing today? So you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Sorry, just type your name in, okay? Okay, you want to do a seven-question game or you want... Thanks, Jones, I can yeah. dig that. 30 seconds. Hey, Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betty Bakes Me Bread. Four. Aren't we supposed to be on four? Can you take a look at the prompter? Yeah. Well, yeah, what well I don't do care if he's up on the teasers. I need that now. 20 seconds. Whoa, heads up. All right, when a question pops up, you got to buzz in. Then you pick your answer on the screen and hit the right key on your keyboard. You follow me? Ten seconds. Hey, good luck. Get rid of the desktop, please. Now get rid of the desktop. Okay. Thank you, Ann. Go to black. Okay, everybody set. Hold tight. Holy drive. I think I'm cured. I'm telling you, with Cyberlicious Fruit Snacks, you can turn screensavers into lifesavers. Okay, you ready to fly? Time for blast off. Right. Get ready for some fun. It's question number one. Oh, yeah. The category dating and moist labials. And this one's gonna be worth one thousand dollars. Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff. Your main squeeze looks deep into your eyes and whispers that it's time to explore liquids, plosives, labials, dentals, and frictives. What will you be learning? Trombone, plane, kissing, linguistics, or SNS? You'll be learning about the different types of sounds in... Linguistics. Lesson 1. The bilabial lingual fricative... About... Look to do is question number two. Next up... The future of America and guys named Screech. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Imagine a new episode of Saved by the Bell on which the kids hold elections for student body president. Screech stands in front of his homeroom and says he plans to cast the nerd vote for Zach. And what is Screech participating? A primate, a caucus, the electoral college, or a ballot box? A caucus. You know, it's kind of reassuring to know that Screech is participating in the political process. Question three. The category is Nutty Ways to Fly. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. Wright Brothers is to airplane as Professor Ned Brainard is to Flubber, Hal, the Great Glass Elevator, or Ch Well, that's a pretty chitty answer. In case you're curious about the correct answer, <laughs> Flubber, invented by the absent-minded professor from the movie of the same name. Yeah, Flubber is short for flying rubber. All right, come on. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. Here's the category. Four wings beats a full house. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hang on tight, because here we go. If Wilma Flintstone comes home to find a Paleozoic-era dragonfly in the living room, what is the smallest size fly sweater she'll need to kill it? A normal modern-era one will do just fine. She needs one about three feet across, she needs one about the length of Fred's car, or she needs one... Paleozoic dragonflies had wingspans of 30 inches. <laughs> So, she'll need a sweater about three feet across and the all-time mother of paper towels. How about it? Uh-oh! Wes Truck licks nine more! It's time for a... Snickerfish restaurant! The category for this gibberish question? Bodily functions, quantity, and quality. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. What product slogan does this rhyme with? Miss Floods, Store Glow. In number one, 
it's from a beer commercial. Can't see what you got, sir. I'll tell you, the only thing better than a cold glass of beer is a warm glass of human breast milk. Okay, big... Gotta be quick! Whoa, whoa. This one's gonna be... If they could see me now, they'd be squid. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. Imagine that Kathy Lee Gifford, spokeswoman for Carnival Cruise Lines, wants to try out a new cruise line. What itinerary could she expect for a voyage on Wagner's The Flying Dutchman? Sailing to Denmark by way of Holland, sailing forever until she's freed by love, going on an ill-fated three-hour tour, or going straight to hell? Holland. Hmm. It's called The Flying Dutchman, and Dutchmen are in Holland, but it still won't fly. And here's the right answer. She could be sailing for a very long time. The captain of the Flying Dutchman was doomed to sail endlessly until he was redeemed by the love of a woman. Could Kathy Lee be that woman? All right, come on, hit. Zaba dooba dabbin, question seven. The category behind this question is presidents in hot water. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. People often get themselves out of hot water with their significant other by buying them gifts. The bigger the present, the better. If each of these U.S. presidents were to lie and say he made his famous purchase for his wife, which president could claim he bought the biggest gift? President Monroe, Florida. President Alaska has the biggest area of the four. Now, I don't know if Mrs. McKinley thought the purchase was actually for her, but if I ever meet her, I'll ask her. The name of this category is What's Nude With You? And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Who would most likely be asked to wear a snood on the job? George from the Jeffersons, Kojak from Kojak, Hawkeye from MASH, or Flo from Alice? Flow. A snood is like a hairnet. So when you kiss her grits, you'll be guaranteed they're hairless. Okay. Ooh, ooh, what's your sign? It's number nine. All right, let's see what we're doing here. A surprise in your picnic basket. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Okay, imagine you and a friend are having a picnic. Suddenly, she pulls out a jar of some dark tar substance and demands you taste it. If it's a popular English sandwich spread, then which one of these could it be? Dolomite, Marmite, Hematite, or Hermaphrodite? You'll be choking down Marmite. It's an English sandwich spread made from yeast extract. As to whether it'll stay down, well, it Marmite not. All right, come on, hit me. We need a category. Here's the category. The fats of life. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. Natalie and Tootie from the Facts of Life have decided to become professional boxers. If they each bulk up to 176 pounds, what professional weight class will they fight in? Middleweight? How about dead weight? Shoulda picked this. Heavyweight. Once you're over 175 pounds, you're in. I'll tell you, those second and third helpings of Mrs. Garrett's mashed potatoes really paid off for those gals. We've got 10 questions down, and for 10 more, we're going on to round two. <laughs> now, we are one round away from the jack attack, and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention, and let's do And now, 11. Next up. I've got a hunch about this. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. Okay, get your fingers ready, let's get busy. Because they have matching deformities, all of these characters would be able to share the same custom tailored tuxedo jacket, except for whom? Captain Ahab of Moby Dick, Shakespeare's King Richard III, Quasimodo, or Punch of Punch and Judy? No, Punch has a hunch. Now the correct answer is Ahab's jacket would look normal. 
doesn't have a hump like the rest, but he's got a peg leg, so he might want to get his pants tailored a little. All right, come on. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. Once again, it's time for a Flagger Piss No Scum. This gibberish questions category is Fits Like a Glove. And if you're really fast, you can get up to 10000 bucks for this gibberish question. Now, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this puzzle, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of money away every second and a half. Okay, get yourself ready. Here comes the puzzle. What does this rhyme with? Tights glove, the round Mabel. Okay, let's see if you know it. Gather round and let me tell you the story of Sing Barfer and the tights of the round Mabel. Although I heard Sir Lancelot lobbied for a triangular table. He's such a square. Okay. It's number 13. The category, the Brady's and the Old West. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. The schoolyard bully Buddy Hinton inherited a dude ranch and decided to name it after Cindy Brady. What would the logical name be based on Cindy's idiosyncrasy? The OK Carol, the Lazy S, the Bobby Q, or the Brand B? Mm-hmm. Fendi had a lift. And if I remember correctly, Peter ended up kicking Buddy's ass. How about it? 14! The category is, where's a male porn star when you need one? I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. All right, imagine you're lost in the Sahara Desert. Luckily, you have your famous male porn star compass to guide you. Which of these men is not a famous porn star and therefore could not be a point on your compass? Randy West, Jack South, Nick East? I think not. Too bad you didn't pick this. Jack South. Look, you can jack any direction you want, just don't do it into the wind. Alright, come on. Uh-oh, Test Nut Slick Crime Store. Once again, it's time for a... Tinker Lake Test Here's your gibberish category. The wholesome snack kids love. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. Okay, you ready? What phrase does this rhyme with? Please, Newts. We roars. Don't let the punctuation. Go for it. Type in your answer. Uh. It's a breakaway. He skates in all alone. Please, Newts. We roar. Okay. Question number 16. And I like it too. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Characters that are whacked. 6,000 bucks is riding on this one. Imagine the special reunion episode of Frasier in which his ex-wife Lilith pays a visit. Lilith is hit on the head and wakes up believing she's the Lilith of somatic legend. Which of these might be a good idea for Frasier to do? Buy more of Eddie's dog food, hide their son Frederick, open all the windows in his apartment, or take Daphne to the park. Take Daphne to the park? Uh, it's wrong, but it's still a good idea. I mean, let's get the woman some sun, for God's sake. What you should have picked was hide their son, Frederick. Uh, Lilith was a demon that killed children. She was also the first wife of Adam. I guess she took the divorce pretty hard. How about it? Hit me with the category. The name in this category is Sex, Drugs, and Maritime Law. Hello, this one's going to be worth $6,000. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. According to Maritime Law, if Miami Vice's Crockett and Tubbs capsize their cigarette boat and they are rescued by the love boat, who does not receive part of the rescuer's reward? Go for Princess Cruise Lines. <laughs> oh, excuse me. And let's see the correct answer. Captain Steubing's daughter gets nothing. Getting no award and having Captain Steubing as your father? I toss myself overboard. All right, come on, hit me. We need a cat.
The category behind this question is the show that would not die. And this one is not going to be easy. $6,000. Okay, we're coming at you. Heads up. Imagine the terrifying episode of The Brady Bunch in which Mike Brady discovers he has bradycardia. What does that mean? He has an officially registered coat of arms, his courage fails him under pressure, he has an abnormally slow heartbeat, or his garden is infested with... Mike Brady failed courage? Apparently you never saw the Grand Canyon episode. You know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. An abnormally slow heartbeat. Hope Carol doesn't start complaining about his lazy pumping. This one's gonna be, it's every man's dream. And this one's gonna be worth $2,000. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. If you wanted to be a little taller and a little thinner immediately, which environment should you simulate in your home? The ocean floor, a rainforest, a cave, or outer space? In weightlessness, your spine straightens and ooh, your intestines ride up. You could become an inch taller and lose a couple of inches of girth. Wait until Jenny Craig finds out about this. How about it? Hit me with the category. Next up, tonight I'm gonna party like it's 1599. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. All right, imagine that the artist formerly known as Prince decides to write a song based on Romeo and Juliet. When he gets to the line, oh Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo, he replaces art thou with are you. What's the best replacement for the word wherefore? Death, why, where, or what? I think not. Here's what you should have guessed. Wherefore really means why. For example, wherefore did Prince change his name to that symbol thingy? Alright, come on, hit me. We need a cat. Enter. Oh, you've done the attack before, huh? All right, let's get busy. Here's your clue. Sing along if you must. All right, remember that clue. Let's see how well you can sing along with this. Superlatives like great, amazing, fabulous, trivia geek with no social life, stuff like that. But don't thank me because the real truth is you don't know Jack. Great show, everyone. Boy, really, really great work. Be sure to stick Cookies. around for the exciting part two conclusion of What's One Spot's Baby. All right, Maybe if you want to play a game, you just got to 